Hi everybody, uh, welcome to my fifth match of this year's online world championship. Uh, I'm playing Dale Nelson from the US and so far I have won two and lost two. So winning uh, is really important here to stay in the competition, but all that I can try to do is play well and see what comes out of it. Um, so, as always, uh, if you like the content, uh, please press the corresponding button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, here we go. Okay, I haven't checked the, the PR of my opponent, so I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I'll try whenever I can to comment on his place. So we said good match. I'm just waiting for the match to start. So it just did a little bit of a delay. Okay, to one hidden split. Okay, straightforward hit and make the point. Question is this a cube already? I don't think so. I think he probably can even consider hitting on my deuce point to just not allow me to use my entire role to attack him, but this is also fine, I guess. And I think it's a bit too early to cube here. So now I have various options. This looks tempting because he has more blots. Making the prime looks too passive. So yeah, I mean, this feels quite good. Now, after a dance, I don't think it's too good, so we'll just cube, and I think he should pass. Too many threats, uh, too blocks, uh, simply too many gamuts, so good pass by him, I think. Yeah, standard to split here. For one, not a great roll. To be honest, I don't see anything better, but improving my checker distribution, playing to the eight. I will play six to five with the ace for sure. Five to so I cannot play, shouldn't play passively. Keep him busy, develop my position. So that seems straightforward. Even if he hits me now, I can anchor or hit back. So yeah. That's not ideal. I think I cannot hit and break my eight points, so I just have to hope for the best. And I think he probably should have cubed here. Mm. 
many threats. So if I roll a bad number now, he will have lost his market. So I think it doesn't matter what I play, I'll have to pass this cube. So I think it's not a play on, it's also not a take, so let's not waste time on it. And yeah, I should drop this. Too many threats, too many gammons, but I should drop it, I think, no matter how I play it. Okay, let's make the anchor. That feels weird, 11-6. I think he should probably just submit his three point. I didn't pay too much attention. But stacking that early, I mean, his blood on the 11 point is not in great danger because I'm reluctant to break my bar point order to hit, so didn't like his play there. And yeah, I could have also played eight to five, but I think no matter what I do, I'll have a strong cube here and I think he should pass. So would be happy if he takes, I mean, position is just too weak, uh, stack on the six, two blood, the blood on the ace, so I think it's a very clear pass and he recognizes this, good decision by him, I would say. Two hits and I guess one checker down. Okay, yeah, difficult decision here. Natural play is to split because I'm threatening a prime, but of course there's an awful lot of hidden cover numbers. So I can understand this play, maybe that's better. Okay, I cannot cover, so I guess just have to hit and now since he rolled a bad number from the bar I think uh, can have I have a cube here again strong position many threats I think he should have played six to one the tempo hit with the five Yeah, I think had he played the tempo hit, probably could have taken, but like this, looked pretty bad. So, series of quick games. I think he should split 13 6 is too passive in my opinion. Nine point was the only play that I saw. Three E2, so I will attack him and anchor up. Nothing special here, I think. Got lucky, but now I need an ace, really, or a four is okay. Two, six, five isn't. 
So now I'm in trouble. I think I have to run. I don't see don't see anything, frankly. So threes are duplicated at least. So yeah, this looks almost mandatory. Maybe I overlooked something. But there's some duplication going on. And And it seems like he's playing a bit passive so far. I don't know if you can play a to three, but it really would have been important to keep me from making the five. Well, now he can attack me, of course. That's a great shot. He should make the five point for sure and not cover his deuce. I don't don't like that play too much. I mean, it worked. And he should have at least considered a cube here. I think. Because his numbers are di diversified. Um, aces, threes and sixes for the 5.5s to escape. So now I have a clear drop. So Maybe it was even a play on, I don't know if it was a play on anything. I mean, should focus on my decision. So I think my decision was pretty clear to drop this. So still no game played until the end. I don't, I, I mean, hitting, yes, that's okay. Yeah, but not stripping the midpoint, that's much better. Much better hit, I'll hit back. He'll hit me. And what will I do? Hit him again? Probably I cannot anchor anything. So now the question is, shall I keep him busy and hit the second checker since he has got some blocks? Looks a bit weird, but I have another block to shoot at. So yeah, looks strange. But I also don't see anything. Maybe I'm overlooking something here, but yeah, I want to buy some time to consolidate my position. So it's perfectly fine now to make the ace once once you you hit there. Because the blood is certainly a bigger liability. Then having the ace point made. Yeah, 10 point is fine, I think. That's a good play by him. And now, yeah, don't see much, but uh, just escaping on back checker. I really would like to make an anchor now. So position is not looking great, to be honest. So I don't question is this looks not too good especially where's the last use i mean that gives me a strip position usually you make the point that's just standard but i think this looks better so i'll do it It's just more flexible. I think he should hit me on the ace for sure. Now, basically, okay, had I fanned, it would have been over. Now I have a decent game. 
I don't know, in his shoes, maybe making the ace and the three with the double fives is stronger. Three, one, okay, another point. So now, of course, I hope to be able to attack. I think he should keep his midpoint for now. No reason to give me four numbers. This looks good. Great shot by me. Okay, he dances, but of course, nowhere near a cube. So now I can make the eight. The eight looks nice, certainly. Bar point is not that important, but I don't see much else. Can make the bar. Usually it's really bad to have the ace and the bar point because uh, and that's just a rule of thumb because they, I mean, with the, the bar point, you want to block checkers on the ace point. And if you have your ace point made, then that's not possible, obviously. Okay, I think after this, with this joker, I also want to get some freedom for my back, back checkers with the last three and now can i play on for the gammon two checkers on the roof i mean it feels like if it just enters with one checker i still can cash probably if he enters with two i'll just take a roll i don't know uh, Fields okay, so where's the ace? Maybe this. I don't know. If he enters with one, I'll just cube him. And certainly not an easy take, if at all. So that was the rationale for me playing on the roll before. So if he doesn't enter, I continue playing on. If he enters with one, I have a very strong cube, but I'm curious to see whether I was correct here. So that's a mutual holding game that we are playing here. Um, yeah, so far, six games, uh, six times, double pass as the cube action. Okay. So, yeah, I was just about to say this mutual holding games is about waiting for a Big double, I think he shouldn't make his bar a good play, so that, that would conserve his flexibility. I mean, that's stripping him, he's ahead in the race, so... Don't think that was correct, so now he's not ahead in the race anymore, so shall I simply play like this? I think so. Now it's me with the slight advantage. Not so slight anymore, but of course nowhere near a double and looks like we will follow the tradition of double passes in this match. Has to roll really big to stay in the game. She didn't, so that's just standard double pass. So that's seven in a row because I don't think he will take this ever. I mean, of course, happy if he does, you never know, but yeah. 
highly unlikely. <clears throat> yeah, you should split and play down. That's not the right idea here in this situation. I don't want to break my eight point in order to make the three. Good shot by him. Bad shot by me, but still, I don't think this is a cube. Now he can make the 16. And yeah, if I dance again, then it's certainly a cube. Think enough play left. Oh, okay, I dance again, but yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that this is a pass. Lots of work to do for him. Maybe I'm hallucinating here and I'm leading in the match, but it feels like okay, can just anchor. I mean, he does, he only has eight checkers in the zone, so I will take this. Just feels, has to clear the 16, build his board, one return shot, and I'm back in the game, but yeah, maybe I'm too optimistic here, but position looks just, just too nice. I don't think he should bury checkers here. Well, oh, now I wish I would have passed. Now it's really time to roll nice. Why that isn't he playing 39? Yeah, for sure that was. I guess that was a misclick. So three is there. I don't want to step out. I think try to get an anchor. Yeah, now I got to hit something. He should hit two checkers. That's really bad. So that gives me breathing room. So that was really a too, uh, yeah, too passive. He should have uh, hit two blots. He would have had a five point board by now, by now, by the way. So this is, now I really have good chances to anchor. And if I anchor with the, with the open um, three point, it's, not so easy to get this home so even so i'm yeah i dodged a bullet here i think he should just clear i mean he should have played all that from the 14 and from the midpoint clear everything because uh, now i'll build my board and he can easily leave a shot on the mid which he does now or he has to leave a shot, probably not on the mid. But yeah, that was not good by him. Well, nothing good by me either. So now he finally has made his three points. So his suboptimal play didn't get punished so far it's still not the best of distributions now it's looking fine for him yeah here we go now i better hit yes that's great and i will jump out with the other checker i think yeah and that's interesting. He only has five checkers off. If I simply make the sixth prime, probably will have a pass because, I mean, he can expose more blood. I mean, let it be his problem. I think that's a cube. can expose more blood and even, yeah, 
not sure because of the score, but yeah, certainly not not a good situation for him. So I got lucky in the end. But also he gave me some chances unnecessary chances uh, yeah this uh, reinforces my first impression he's a bit too passive playing a bit too passively okay so would be really nice to hit that checker but there is still plenty of contact left okay that's way too early so he's a little bit rattled it seems by the turn of events no market losers whatsoever maybe double aces followed by a miss or something but yeah really No need to cube here. I mean, when you are down in the match, uh, uh, you want to cube early in gammonish positions. But here with my anchor and his zero point board, not much gammon danger. So this is just not the right spot for an aggressive cube uh, trailing in the match. Okay, yeah, I'll keep my goalkeeper for a while longer. Let's see what happens. He's got some bad rolls, like just wanted to mention 6 3 and 5 4. That's 6 3. Uh, I think you should play 6 to 3. This is extra numbers. So, and now my board is really strong, so he cannot afford. I think to give me any extra so and six to three unstacks the six point it's only 12 numbers well okay uh then it was was good um i think i will keep the blot on the midpoint aces are duplicated anyway a bit at least does it okay let let think this through does it really help he will hide his blood so huh i don't think it's a big deal but also not too helpful Ah, and yeah, he makes the five, so yeah, it didn't matter. Maybe XG sometimes likes to keep the pressure on and keep the blood there. Also, wouldn't have been much downside to it, so maybe I should have done it. Is there anything better? I can make my points in order, so I'd rather go for the juice point here first. I mean, now we're in a stage where there are virtually no shot leaving numbers, or even though although five four, so maybe we'll look at the five four. But now I got the juice, which I prefer, of course, over the ace point, and I got get I got four numbers, so up. So six is forced. Uh, stepping out with two, what for? I don't see a reason. So maybe I should do that. So let's again, he hits me with, with uh, something. So now he cannot point on me. Yeah, maybe that's not a bad idea. 
On the other hand, I mean, there are not too many pointing numbers. I don't know. That's more the standard play, but... I mean, the race is even now, so why should I expose more blood? Uh, I'm happy to roll a three here to make the anchor, which didn't happen. Yeah, good shot. Okay, race is very close. I've got a strong board. So, I guess I will step up and hope to roll a six. So then I would have a good game. I don't think he should stack. He should hope that I don't roll a six and then he would have better chances to attack me. So he's playing a clearing points racing game when he is not really having an advantage. So he should have played flexibly to be able to attack me. Yeah, now he has to do it under, or maybe he doesn't, but now the conditions are much worse uh, since he stacked on the six point. So now it's fours and sixes for two. So now. We are pretty much in the game. Slight underdog, but owning the cube is nice. Do you know how to play this? Maybe. Yeah, so let's see if I can turn around another game. One, two, three, four. Nice. I mean, okay. I'm certainly the favorite now. Seven pips. Now I'm definitely the favorite, but of course not close to redouble territory. I have to be a little bit more careful. This is still not a redouble with the lead. And now, well, okay. I mean, there are, I mean, uh, this is really like eight checkers against nine checkers. And this should be a pass probably even. I mean, I, but uh, yeah, I would hate to lose eight points here, giving a chance to get back into the game. So what are my, my winning chances? Hmm. Yeah. He should be at 15% at most, I would say. Okay, that's, that's a really difficult for me. 15%, so if I mean that on the other hand I also I think I'm the much stronger player do I really want to gamble it in one game here so hmm I don't know I will take another roll just uh, for practical purposes I mean, when in doubt, so now I guess I have to cube. I mean, still more improvement. And now I will cube and let it be up to him. The feeling that he will take, I don't know what's correct. But he's probably a little bit upset about how the match went so far. So let's see what he does. I have no idea. I mean, 
bit tired, let's say with more time and in a tournament situations, I would have taken my time to make the exact math. Okay, no surprise that he took. Double force is good, of course. But maybe it was even correct. I oops, I don't know. Certainly. Okay, better roll. Uh, it's not great, but what can you do? So, a little bit of suspense here. And, yeah, turned another game, turned around. Now it's really looking good, but as you know, it ain't over till it's over. So maybe I shouldn't do this because of the score. More make play more like the racing style. No idea. I'll make the play that is in line with the score where I want to get into simple positions without many gammons. Probably, probably he should already cube here. What does he have to lose? And that's a clear take, of course. So, need to turn one more game around to win this. I should, he should make the offensive five point. He should go for the gammon again. Play too passively, I will split my back checkers. And he's not in a great position to, to attack me right now, so my chance. Go for the anchor. That's even better. Going for the race. Mutual holding game with me being the favorite. Now it's that's the ideal scenario and he's down in the race. Why should he run here? He should just make his eight, his um, ace point. So, but uh, it could be also that he's a bit frustrated, frustrated here. Maybe I should have made the juice to put some pressure on, on his blood. Mm. A little bit losing my concentration here. That's could be avoided. Certainly don't want to hit loose and just try to get this home. Four one makes the deuce, I guess. I mean. This looks a bit more flexible, but uh, the other lets me attack, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I will make the point just so that I can attack his checker. And he does, me, does, the favor, does me the favor of running. So I'm now I'm a very big favorite in the race so he's i mean that's just not what you're supposed to do reduce contact when you're trailing in the race so all i need to do is roll another big number and yeah this is close to being over so that the um, the first four matches all went to the wire to DMP or were very close and or at least the first three the I think the last I can't quite remember and this uh, right now looks like an easy victory as I said it ain't over till it's over so I'll just see but this looks really 
almost done. I think he made my life too easy, definitely. Overall too passive. He's saying GG already, probably that's, yeah, highly likely that it will be over. So this match, so it's always interesting to predict your PR. I didn't feel like I made too many really serious mistakes. It felt fairly easy, but sometimes in these, you get a bad surprise, like in matches that felt uh, very difficult, uh, then you get a positive surprise that you played well. Well, here I think I played okay, but uh, yeah, we'll be in for the verdict very soon, now, so to speak. Yeah, 2.1, as I hoped for, good PR, he didn't play that well as expected, so let's jump into the analysis. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the good impression that I had from my game overall uh, confirmed. Uh, curious to see what the cube mistakes are. Maybe I should have recubed earlier uh, at the at the lead. Is my prediction when I had the lead that recube, but uh, uh, we'll see. And yeah, he didn't play. Well, um, yeah, I commented on most of the plays that I thought were mistakes. So let's just first just go through the first game, just show you the cube actions. I was thinking for a second whether this is too good, but it turns out it's not this. Uh, I was confident that it's it would be, I mean, that this is a pass, so I'm a bit surprised. So that means I should have thought a little bit more about the 6-1. Uh, I, I thought I have to pass anyway, so whatever. But I got lucky here. So this is what I call PR luck. Uh, this is a situation where you cannot make a mistake. So that's uh, no matter what you do, you won't make a big mistake. So Nick game three, another double pass, very much standard. Uh, I think he misplayed some, yeah, the double threes was, I, but uh, as I said, I commented some of his mistakes. So I will just keep to my own mainly. So let's just, uh, uh, this one, maybe I should comment. Uh, I said, if he wants to take, he should make the tempo hit. Uh, that looks like this, so now I have fewer numbers to cover and he just keeps me off balance. If he plays too passively, uh, then I can just cash. So, benefit of the tempo hit, uh, big topic in my book that will be out by the 15th of May to hit or not to hit. Um, yeah, here uh, I commented uh, that uh, he should have cubed earlier again. Probably I would have passed, but again, uh, no matter what I do, everything is fine. And uh, what usually happens uh, uh, when you miss a uh, clear cube and you improve, then you cash, even though you should have continued to play on uh, for the gammon in this case too. So let's see, game six, nothing special. So I will just check the cube action. Okay, so now I remember I played like this. Uh, should have played like this, but it doesn't matter. And then he danced and then I explained to you why I think it's too good. 
uh, which it actually is, would have been a blunder to cube this simply with the argument, um, if he dances, I will just uh, continue playing on and later if he enters with one checker, I can always cash and uh, if he dances a couple more times, I can basically, if something happens most of the time, I can cash. So it's not a free roll, it never is. He can roll double threes, double deuces. Uh, yeah, but the danger that he gets uh, back into the game is not that great. So yeah, I followed the plan. As soon as he enters with one, then I probably have to cube as, this, as in this case. So let's go to game seven. Uh, yeah, that's, I think I commentated on this where, I mean, that's interesting because usually you want to make your bar point, but here it's just too inflexible. So you play it like this, and then he has so many strip points, so uh, often he'll leave a shot, and as it happened, no, I, I simply won the race here, so that was just the clear racing cube, so nothing special, and still, I mean, soon my cube mistakes should be coming. So first of all, this is, yeah, I was hesitant a bit. I mean, my position is just so nice, but I'm leading in the match. So it was close, take pass decision. So again, uh, even had I done the other thing, wouldn't have been a big mistake. So just on the take pass baller line. Uh, I knew that for money, I take this in a heartbeat, but I have to be more conservative a bit with the lead because it's more difficult for me to get to good recubes. And I got to a recube, uh, maybe, we should look at the play that I criticized most here when he was executing the blitz. And that was this one where he just should have finished me off or at least tried to, especially, I mean, that's the correct move, hitting two checkers and looks, final position looks like this, especially if I hit uh, one checker, he's, I have a blot in my home board so can pick up another checker and yeah, if I dance, then it's almost over. So that was a big mistake, 400. Just to show you how big these things can become. Yeah, and then here I shouldn't have you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really surprised when I see uh, almost 40, 24% winning chances. Uh, I think I will make a small rollout because I really don't believe this. Uh, XG is usually over-evaluating the, the side with the checkers off. Just, just for cu cu curiosity, I will uh, interrupt it soon. But maybe I'm just wrong. And yeah. And indeed, that was too early. I mean, for practical purposes, I don't know if I had taken in his shoes, maybe just because of the being down in the match. However, this is also a money take. So it seems like he wins. I mean, it's more difficult for me to make the six prime and roll it home than I initially thought, but yeah, I'm surprised and I will interrupt the rollout now. You can see still not a re redouble, didn't change much. So yeah, I will have a closer look at this position later. But yeah, interesting, but I don't fault myself for this mistake, especially since it worked and he passed, but it wasn't like a bluff double, it was just uh, this uh, when in doubt double rule. Here, the, the way, way too early cube, uh, I mean, nothing much has happened. Germans are down compared to the starting position, so absolutely no reason to cube this. No market loses, basically. And was this the one where I got... Oh, okay, so missed cube, yeah. Ha. Okay, so when I see this, 
Yeah, 15%. I think I said 15%, uh, but that was no calculation. It was just feeling, I mean, rough uh, uh, calculation. And yes, I should have cubed, but I just didn't feel comfortable. So that was, uh, I think, uh, against a top player, I would have found that cube. Uh, and uh, But as you can see, I didn't even get punished. He took it uh, later. So uh, for this uh, no double for practical purposes. I don't fault myself at all. No problem here for me to have done this. I have rolled, but because of my, because of what I saw uh, that, that I was just, I thought, really thought I should be about at least five to seven PR points better, playing better than him. So why should why should I give him the chance to turn everything around with a with an eight cube? So I want four points here. Uh, uh, then this cube, uh, actually this cube. Uh, I don't mind. Actually, I'm surprised that he shouldn't cube this. Gammon's a bit increased. So I think I would have cubed this too. Well, I don't know why is this not a cube. Maybe uh, the answer is there's just not enough volatility. He can improve. I've got the anchor, so that's that's the key point. So it's not very volatile. So he improves, he makes the five point. I roll something mediocre and probably I, I'm still in take territory. So it's just not, the volatility is not there. That is my uh, immediate uh, explanation for this. So I don't fault his double. I would have done the same, but of course, once he, is down in the race. Uh, uh, he should maintain contact, especially he's not afraid of getting blitzed or anything. He cannot lose a gammon. So that was uh, all over. Uh, sometimes it's easier to play a good PR against weaker players when they are weak passive, like uh, don't, uh, yeah, like here, uh, uh, converting the game into a running game where I cannot make any mistakes anymore. Uh, but that's not always the case, um, so, especially when they are passive at the, with the cube as well. So you don't have too many difficult cube decisions. Um, then that's certainly good for your PR. But there is also another type of uh, not so good player who's, uh, uh, let's say, very wild and uh, lots of action. And so... Um, so many checkers back, lots of attacks, and there it's not the case that you necessarily play play better on average. Um, so I don't know. I ha don't have a strong feeling against which, I mean, PR-wise, which players I play better. But anyhow, it doesn't matter. You have to play the player and you try to play as good as you can, uh, of course. As you have seen, I make some adjustments, but I uh, learned the hard way that most of the adjustments that I did in the past uh, hurt, hurt me and not my opponent. So I'm really careful now with the adjustments, to be honest. So yeah, that, that was it. Uh, a bit shorter than the last ones, but still some interesting spots at least. Again, if you liked it and if you learned something, please uh, press the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And yeah, until next time.